Hey everyone, this is Kelvin. I'm talking to Matt Harvey of Exhumed, uh, also Gruesome and um, Pounder. Thanks for talking to me, Matt. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. All right, and um, I'm talking with you just um, a couple of weeks before the new album uh, to the Dead that will come out October 21st on Relapse Records. So everyone definitely check that out, pre-order it, stream it um support exhumed um hey matt uh, i just wanted to let you know you know I'm, I'm a big fan of exhumed i actually i kind of picked up on exhumed when you um brought it back with uh all guts no glory um so oh, kind of that's kind of where my entry point was awesome um, yeah so um yeah you've been on a, a pretty a streak of albums since then i, I believe that was kind of like the comeback um I know uh, around that time, you kind of like put uh, a hold on Exhumed from like, I want to say 2000, uh, 2003 to like 2010. But um, since you've reactivated Exhumed, kind of like, um, how do you feel like the Exhumed is from the past 12 years versus the previous um, uh, uh, existence of Exhumed? I mean, it, you know, in some ways, it's kind of the exact same. And in a lot of other ways it's really totally different <laughs> I, I think the thing with the the first sort of incarnation or the first era of the band or whatever you know where we did the first three records um i think you know musically and, and conceptually we had a lot of you know a lot of the same ideas i was gonna say good ideas but that might be generous um, we had a lot of the same kinds of ideas that you know we're still doing today um but we didn't really have uh, a lot of the know-how, especially from like a business standpoint or like a production standpoint or, you know, a technical standpoint really to like make them happen the way that we wanted. Um, and, you know, everyone in the band or, you know, kind of was just not interested in that stuff. And uh, that was really a big stumbling block for, for that era. You know, in terms of the music, you know, I think we've, I think the music is hopefully fairly consistent and there's a, a, a through line there because, you know, my influences haven't really changed much since the late nineties anyway. Um, but I think now we're, we're able to really execute our ideas, both musically uh, in, in terms of running the band, you know, touring and, and doing all the things that you have to do to be a band. We're able to sort of, you know, go from concept to action much more easily. And, and it's been, you know, a learning process really in the last, you know, 10, 11 years or whatever. But um, at least we've always had, you know, people working towards that goal, which was not the case originally, you know? Um, so I, I, and, you know, of course I'm deeply biased, but I think, you know, the current lineup is the strongest one that we've had. And, you know, I think we're, both in terms of playing the music and just getting along as people and just getting shit done, you know? So, uh, I think it's better than ever, at least as far as being in the band, you know, <laughs> the audience yeah, for yeah. Is, who knows? Yeah. I can definitely, I feel that maybe the demand for exhumed is probably like maybe a lot more maybe now than it was back then. Would you say so? Um, yeah, you know, I think, you know, we, we definitely could have, if we would have made some different decisions or just sort of had our ducks in a row a little bit more, I think we could have really built on a lot of the good things that did happen back in the late nineties, early two thousands. Cause it wasn't like, you know, we were unknown or nobody liked us or we didn't get any opportunities or whatever, but I don't think we were really, we just weren't prepared to, to make the most out of them, you know? Um, and now since reforming the band and, and doing all that stuff, Glory and then solidifying, you know, the core lineup, which has been myself and our drummer, Mike Hamilton, you know, he's been playing with us for 10 or 11 years now. And then getting Ross back in the band, you know, four or five years ago, um, you know, we really have a team where everybody's pulling in the same direction and everyone is basically interested in the, in the same things, you know, not always artistically because that's where the, you know, that's where the creativity comes from and it's that first pull, but just in terms of being a, a real working band that fucking, you know, gets on the road and plays a hundred shows a year and does whatever it takes to, to make that aspect of the band happen, you know? 
Yeah. So it, it's been good. Awesome. And um, you mentioned uh, Ross. He's uh, uh, one of the one of the members. Uh, I remember re- uh, hearing like an interview, kind of like how um, he kind of got reintroduced into the band. Like um, I, I believe it was like uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I read this like in an interview somewhere. But kind of like it, there had been like a period of time where the two of you kind of weren't um, that um, you know close no, to we one another getting along at all <laughs> yeah yeah uh, how yeah and then the reintroduction to him um how's that been like kind of like back then to now i mean you know uh, without making it like a, a whole saga but basically like ross and our original drummer cole and i were all from the same neighborhood in san jose um ross and cole went to the same high school i went to the one you know five miles away and we hung out, you know, all through like the last half of, of my high school days. And we were super close friends. We were all deeply into, you know, comics and tabletop role playing games and horror movies. And, you know, we kind of brought Ross into the world of underground death metal. Like, he's like, hey, I like, you know, Ministry and Metallica or whatever. Like, all right, dude, you got to check out Impetigo and, and Carcass or whatever. Yeah, this is like 91. Um, and so, the three of us really kind of figured out what the band was trying to be. And by the time we finally, you know, got to the first record, like four or five years later, we just were really butting heads a lot. And we were, you know, we weren't on the same page anymore. And uh, so after we did the first album, you know, we kind of realized that the, the dynamic between the three of us just wasn't working. So we fired Ross and, uh, you know, it was not a, particularly friendly split you know and then ross uh was already playing with impaled at the time you know who stylistically are really you know kind of in the same corner of the sandbox as we are and so that sort of created like a frenemy rivalry kind of thing between the two bands that we all think is like hilarious now that we're all in our 40s and like it's like come on dude but in the, and it, you know, 20 years ago, it was quite a different story. Um, but, you know, when the band got back together, that had really subsided. And I thought, you know, I kind of thought like, man, it's too bad Ross would never come back and play with Exhum because he'd be perfect. And then as we sort of rekindled just a, you know, a friendly relationship, uh, you know, I was able to sort of gradually <laughs> draw him back in and, uh you know, he's sort of, it's always kind of been his job. And I feel like, you know, the first time we played a show with him and I just heard us singing together, I was like, Oh, this sounds like Exum. Like, this is like what the band's supposed to sound like. So, you know, him being back, I think it's great for the band creatively performance wise, sonically. And, you know, it's even better for me because, you know, he's one of my oldest friends and it's great just having that, friendship back in my life that's been like super uh i don't know it, it, it's 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 just been really positive for me as a person as well as you know a guy yeah. screaming about rotting corpses yeah yeah it's almost uh kind of like the metallica megadeth uh like story <laughs> yeah it's cool. it a little bit like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but oh uh, yeah i remember reading an interview and i remember um like when you guys kind of got um started working together kind of like one of the things that brought you together was just like the like the like the dc and um the marvel like content that was coming out and you guys kind of like rekindled that like uh friendship kind of through just like you know you guys interest in like comics yeah i mean that was a big you know that, that was that was actually how i met ross as i used to work at a comic book store when i was in high school and he was a customer and then it was like cole was like oh i know this kid from my school and i was like oh dude you shop at comics pendragon was the name of the shop i used to look at and all through high school we had this really long marvel superheroes tsr tabletop role-playing game uh this long campaign that i was running and i remember like in my senior year i had my first girlfriend and we were you know finally about to go all the way and i was trying to run this role-playing game session and the fight against the final boss was just taking too long 
And I was like, okay, guys, you know, you're going to defeat this fucking monster, whatever. Like I got to go suck on some tits, like <laughs> games over. And then Cole and Ross were so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that was, uh, you know, that was just something that we had in common outside of music, you know, before and still to this day. And you know, that's great. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts on some of the current stuff? Like, uh, I know like Disney plus is just pumping this stuff out, like, like on a weekly <laughs> basis. I mean, I, honestly, like I, I love it. Like I just, you know, I feel like, uh, if I could go back in time and like tell myself as a teenager, I'm like, dude, you're not going to believe it, but there's a whole TV show in the future, just about Hawkeye. I would be like, the future is awesome. You know, obviously I don't know that the future turned out to be that awesome, but that aspect of it, uh, I'm super into and, you know, I watch everything as it comes out. Some of it is not that great. Some of it's really cool. Um, you know, and it's like, I kind of, I know enough about writing and, and story building to sort of like make myself one of those, annoying it's like well you know the uh, i try not to dwell on that too much and just kind of enjoy it um and most of the stuff i really do you know i really do get a kick out of it even if i don't think it's that great like the moon knight series was like just so so but i was like i'm having a great time watching it so i don't think it's great but i'm having fun and uh you know i know that all trends ebb and flow so i'm just enjoying all the content while it's there, you know, cause in five years when it falls out of favor, you know, that's, there's just not going to be this much of it. So I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm having a great time while I can, you know? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I can't say I'm a, like a diehard, like comic book fan, but I'm a big fan of just like the movies and the shows. Um, and, uh, yeah, I tried, I try to keep up with it, but there's just too much. I'm, I mean, I movies and people are like oh so what's the best new horror movie you've seen in the last like year and i'm like dude i don't have time to watch horror movies because i'm watching fucking you know 17 hours of marvel dc the boys and all this other shit it's like i just don't have time man yeah yeah i know um nfl season just kicked off and i'm like just just been obsessed with like my fantasy football team and keeping up with all the stats and everything so that kind of like got me backed up on the, on keeping up with all the, like the Marvel stuff. Yeah, man. It's, I mean, it's impossible that there's just so much content and it's almost kind of like a blessing because, you know, I was a, I was a huge Raiders fan for years, but then when they moved to Vegas, I was just like, okay, I'm out. Like you already moved to LA and came back. Like, no, like I can't be loyal to a team that's not loyal to its, its fans. So I just kind of stopped. I still loved the sport and I enjoy watching games like at the bar, but I just, it's kind of a devote a whole day, a week to like just thinking about football and getting upset and stressed out about it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm in Arizona. I'm a Cardinals fan and yeah, they're, they're, oh, not, cool. doing, they're not doing so well right now, but, um, well, they're not zero three. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> got that over the Raiders. So, Hey, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I wanted to just kind of touch on the new album. It's going to be coming out October 21st, uh, to the dead. Um, uh, this is a follow-up to, uh, I believe, uh, the horror that came out back in 2019. Um, right. was this, uh, album written kind of, I'm guessing it was kind of written during that uh, pandemic, uh, shutdown period. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How was the writing process just overall? I mean, you know, a, a lot of it wasn't that different because we all live in different areas. You know, Ross is in Oakland and I'm like about three and a half, three and a half hours south of him. I mean, I'm still in California, but uh, Mike, our drummer, he lives in Cleveland and Sebastian, our guitar player, lives in Baltimore. So we're really used to working remotely and, you know, thank God for the fucking Internet, you know, so we can be like, hey, here's the new song. What do you think in real time instead of like sending tapes in the mail or some shit? And, um, so that, that, that wasn't really too different for us. Um, but so we, we kind of spiced it up because we knew we had time because of the pandemic and because of the label schedule being disrupted by the pandemic, as well as our tours being canceled and everything else. Um, so we, we mixed it up and we brought in some previous members, 
uh, to write songs. You know, Mike Beams, who played on the first three records, he wrote a song. And Leon, our old guitarist slash bassist, wrote a song. And Bud, who played on uh, Anatomy is Destiny and Necrocracy and Death Revenge, he wrote a song. And our old bass player, Matt Widener, who was also in the County Medical Examiners in Creighton, he played with us in the mid nineties and he wrote a song. So that, that, that made it really fun. Um, you know, because I knew everybody was just sitting around not fucking working. So I was like, come on, just write a song. It'll be, it'll be a lark. Let's just do it. And, uh, I think it turned out really good. Like I'm, I mean, it was really fun kind of bringing those guys back in and, and adding, you know, just different textures to the record and, and different vibes. Awesome. Yeah. I can definitely hear kind of like, um, a mixture of the song. I got, I got a, a one of the a promo copy, and yeah, each song kind of has its own um, its own style. Um, uh, the one I could think of, uh, "Drained of Color," yeah. like I think the opening riff kind of just reminds me of like the old gore grind, um, kind of like you know style of Exhumed. Um, but yeah, I could definitely hear like uh, <laughs> the variations, uh, song to song. It's it's really really badass. Cool. Well, then it, then it works. You know, I mean, I think the thing is, it's like, it's a balancing act really at this point, because, you know, it's still exhumed and it's full of blast beats and blood and guts and decomposing eyeballs and shit. Um, but you know, there has to be enough dynamics and enough push pull between the songs to make it, you know, to make it interesting, especially because we've done a bunch of records. So, you know, we, we have the same, I think concerns probably as, as the people just hearing the record as fans do like, you know, we want it to be, you know, we, we want it to sound like us, but we don't want it to just be utterly repetitive because then what's the fucking point, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't wait to, you know, see you guys live. I know you got a tour with gruesome coming up, uh, in October. And then, um, I believe, uh, Exum right now. <laughs> oh, right now. First show. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I live in the um, Arizona, so I'm hoping to. Uh, I'm actually on the like the northern part of Arizona, so I'm hoping to go to um, the Albuquerque show. Oh, rad! Yeah, the watch pad is really cool, man. It's a cool spot. We always have a good time there. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I saw that um, your your bass, uh, sorry, your guitarist for um, Gruesome is touring with uh, Max Cavalera. Uh, how uh, did, did that did that cause any like? Um, uh, issues or, or did, did he get your busing? <laughs> um, you know, it wasn't that difficult, um, because the last gruesome tour that we did, uh, supporting the obituary, he, he actually could not do that tour due to, he had some issues with work and he had some issues just with his own life. And, you know, we, you know, he was really trying to, to do the tour with us. And it got to the point where we're like, Dan, just don't worry about it it's okay. Like, you, you know, just deal with all of your own shit first. And then like, you know, we, we have Sebastian from exhumed and also noise him. he's here with us and he did the obituary tour with us already. So he had already done one tour with us and it went great. So we weren't too worried. And, you know, he's, you know, Dan is a, a phenomenal guitar player and he's also like double tour is one of his, you know, like, them and Maiden, and I think, and Morbid Angel are like his three favorite bands. So, you know, I'm super happy for him that he's doing those shows. And I wouldn't want to hold him back. And, you know, Sebastian's a fucking amazing guitar player in his own right. And he's kind of a Swiss Army knife. You know, he can do whatever. So, uh, you know, we're, we're in very, you know, we're, we're in a very good situation in that we can kind of, we have a deep bench, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's gonna be sick. I've I've yet to see Gruesome uh, live, and yeah, I've always wanted to see Gruesome live. You know, ever since the the uh, the project came out back in like two thousand, I want to say fourteen. But um, so like that, yeah. yeah, super yeah. looking forward to that. Killer. Um, and then you also have the Exhum tour uh, to support uh, to the dead. Uh, in uh, I think right after that um, Gruesome tour. Um, yeah, I'm home for like, I think, uh, like three weeks or so. Um, and of course the last week before tour, like, it's not really like being home anyway. It's just running around like a fucking idiot trying to make sure that, you know, everything is as it should be as much as possible, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, um, but no, I, I really dig that um, exhumed um, that tour lineup. You have Holder and uh, Vitriol. It's like a really um, kind of just a, a good mix of uh, styles. So that's that's a really sick lineup you, uh, you were able to put together for Exhumed. Thanks, man. You know, we, we you know we try to, to put together uh, a package of, of bands that's interesting and that you know it's not just for death metal bands or just for whatever you know it, I, I want every band to sort of you know really stand out and have their own style and and you know I'll just bring something to the table to where people will be like well maybe i've seen these zoom five times but like oh shit this other band's doing it? like great i now i gotta go you know and um i, I think it's a really strong package and all the bands are you know they're really interesting and, and distinct from from one another so i think it should be should be really fun Hell yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can make the, the Exhumed uh, show this uh, December. Um, I saw, I caught Exhumed last year, though, with uh, Creeping Death and um, uh, a Bewitcher. That was a, that was a sick uh, tour lineup as well. Um, but I'm definitely yeah, that, that was really gruesome good for sure. Was that in uh, was that at the launch pad as well? Um, I saw it at Flagstaff. Uh, what was it that? Uh, oh, that- yeah, that was a shockingly pretty good show. I was like, well, Flagstaff, we'll see. You know, maybe twenty people will show up, and it actually turned out to be killer. Yeah, I think uh, it was the first time I ever heard uh, Enforced. Uh, actually, at all, I never heard of Enforced, and like, they just blew me away. I was just like, holy shit! Like, yeah, yeah. Man, those kids got some riffs. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the highlights. Um, on top of seeing Exhumed, but um, yeah, at Flagstaff, it's a. I think that's a kind of a hidden gem for 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 live uh, shows. Um, definitely. Um, don't I don't see too many shows go. Uh, you know, death metal packages like that go through Flagstaff, but um, yeah, definitely, it's it's a good it's a good place and a lot of fans because it's kind of near the the Navajo uh, reservation, which is where I'm from. Right, you always know it's it's going to be a good show when you see a lot of kids from the res come out. You're like, okay, these kids are going to rage. Like they don't fuck, you know, <laughs> they don't stand in the back with their arms crossed in general. Man, they they fucking get into it. It's awesome. Oh hell yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I don't know. I'm I'm like 36 now. I don't I don't rage too hard. I I, I uh, yeah. I kind of just kind of like stand in the back. But um, yeah. No, I definitely did my did my share of like you know moshing and crowd surfing, but um yeah once you once you get injured and you have to go to the hospital it's like no nah, i could definitely just enjoy the music and not put yep. my put my body on the line <laughs> i mean i'm 46 so i feel you 100 percent, man like totally get it <laughs> yeah um but um yeah i think those were a lot of uh, pretty much all my questions matt really appreciate you uh taking the time Great. to talk with me and um yeah everyone check you out to the dead on October 21st. Um, but yeah, thanks again, Matt. Oh, absolute pleasure, man. Thanks for taking the time. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you on tour. Sick. All right. Thank you. All right.